Coach Brandon here, and today we'll cover the hierarchy of nutrition. When it comes to changing your body composition, most people get their priorities a little mixed up. So today we'll briefly cover the most important, the least important aspects of doing so. First and foremost is going to be calories. Now when it comes to calories, there's two figures we have to find out before we set an appropriate calorie amount. First off is BMR or basal metabolic rate. Now to find this number out, we, have, we can either go online and find a BMR calculator, or we can hop on an in-body analysis scale, which will give us that number. All BMR is is how many calories a day we burn without accounting for physical activity. For me personally, my BMR is right around 2,500. Once we find that out, we're going to go ahead and find our TDEE, or total daily energy expenditure, by timesing that number from 1.2 to 1.9 times, depending on activity level. For those of you that live a more sedentary lifestyle, it's probably going to be in the 1.2 range. For those of you that work manual labor jobs, it might be more in the 1.9 to higher ranges. For me personally, I'm probably right in the middle of anything to higher end, so I'll be timesing it by about 1.7. 2,500 times 1.7 is going to be 4,000. Now, once we find this out, keep in mind that's how many calories I need to maintain my current body weight. If I want to gain weight, I have to be over that. If I want to lose weight, i got to be in a deficit by being below that. Now, once we find our calories out, we're going to move on to macronutrients, the second most important aspect here. When it comes to macros, of course, there are three main ones we pay attention to on our diet. There's carbs, protein, and fat. More than anything, we have to find an accurate ratio for our goals. A marathon runner is going to have a lot different macronutrient split than, say, a power lifter. But out of these three, there's one specific macronutrient we really need to pay attention to, and that's protein. The reason that is, is because if you are, say, in a calorie deficit, 3,500 calories, let's say, that I'm taking in a day, even though I'm burning 4,000, I have to at least hit as many pounds of lean body mass I have in grams of protein to not lose muscle mass. So for me, my lean body mass amount is going to be 200. So if I don't get at least 200 grams of protein a day, I'm likely going to lose some muscle mass. So the last thing I want. If I'm in a calorie deficit, I'm going to want most of my weight loss to be fat and not lean body mass or muscle. So once we have these two aspects figured out, the ratio and our protein amount, we're going to move on down to the third most important topic, which is micronutrients slash water intake. Now when it comes to micro, oh, I forgot that over there. <laughs> when it comes to micronutrients, there's a vast variety of different micronutrients out there. There's vitamin K for blood clotting, there's vitamin C for immune function, vitamin B for energy, so on and so forth. More than anything, we have to make sure we get all those in to make sure our body's functioning at its fullest capacity. Whether you do that from a multivitamin or through diet, is up to you. Once we have our micronutrients figured out, we'll move on to water. Now when it comes to water, there's a lot of different schools of thought. You'll hear the, hear the eight glasses of water a day, the one gallon, the two gallons, but more than anything, we just gotta make sure that we're drinking enough water by analyzing our pee. Um, so just make sure that we're looking at it and make sure that it's a clear, light yellow color. If it's any darker, that means you're dehydrated and your body's not gonna function at, at its fullest capabilities. Just make sure you're drinking plenty of water and uh, keeping that pee in a certain color range. Next, we're going to move on to nutrient timing. Okay. Now, when it comes to nutrient timing, um, there's a lot of different aspects we can cover here. The most universally used version of nutrient timing is just the anabolic window. Anabolic window being that window of time, 30 to 45 minutes post-workout, where people eat a uh, fast-digesting carb and a fast-digesting protein to take advantage of muscle protein synthesis along with refilling their glycogen stores. But there's a lot of different aspects here to think about. There's also, we can get into fasting, which will be another video altogether, and then also kind of covering eating more of the carbohydrate-dense food within three hours post-exercise when your body can handle it the best. But besides that, we'll go ahead and leave nutrient timing as it is and move on to our final topic, which is supplementation. 
Now, when it comes to supplementation, keep in mind this lasts for a reason. It's only about 1% to 3% of the total equation, but it can come in handy if you're experiencing any kind of nutrient gaps. Let's say I'm in that 3,500 calorie range, so I'm trying to lose fat, um, and, but I might have trouble hitting that 200 grams of protein a day. That's quite a bit to hit. So to, uh, to kind of replace that last 20 to 30 grams of protein I need to get to to not experience muscle atrophy, I might find it useful to get into a supplement like a protein supplement. We can also kind of get into creatines, pre-workouts, thermogenics, so on and so forth. More than anything though, I just want to keep in mind here that supplements, one to three percent of the equation, not going to be the number one thing to worry about. We got to cover these first, and more importantly, these three. Um, that's about it today for the Hierarchy of Nutrition. It's Brandon Morgan signing out.